Here's everything I ate in a day in Bath. I cannot believe it's my first time coming to Bath. This city really does feel like the set of Bridgerton. One of the first places I spotted when I arrived was this place selling Portuguese tarts. I can never say no to a pastel de nata because they're just the perfect bite-sized snack. To be perfectly honest, this wasn't quite as good as I was expecting it to be. The pastry was a bit on the blonde side and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but the custard had a slightly off taste to it. Anyway, onwards and upwards, I continued exploring Bath for a few hours before before it was time for lunch. Came to number 15 by Guest House, which conveniently is also the hotel I'm staying at. We started the meal with some KFC cauliflower, and honestly, cauliflower tastes so good when it's battered and fried. It came with a rich, creamy blue cheese mayonnaise as the dipping sauce, which I was a big fan of. The next thing we had were bath chaps, and I honestly had no idea what these were. It turns out they are pressed pig's cheek and tongue. so full and hearty in flavor, and they went perfectly with that sweet, tangy, piccalilli sauce. Our final starter were these herb and garlic stuffed tiger prawns. And I'm sorry, but are these not the largest prawns you've ever seen in your life? Onto the mains, we had some steak with chimichurri sauce. And if you haven't tried this combination, you really need to. Chimichurri is just so deliciously zingy and herbaceous. Also had some char grilled chalk stream trout. I think I've realized that trout is one of my least favorite kinds of fish. Something about the flavor just doesn't do it for me. The absolute highlight of the meal were the courgette flowers that were stuffed with goat's cheese and a truffle honey. Courgette flowers are genuinely one of my favorite things in the world and this one was phenomenal. For dessert we got a peach and white chocolate sundae. That peach sorbet was so strong in flavor that it actually tasted like biting into a peach. I loved the little bits of honeycomb which gave the dish its crunch and the creamy white chocolate gelato also went down a treat. Thank goodness I was staying in the hotel because after lunch I went straight into a food coma. Look at how cute my hotel room is. Highlights include the record player which of course I forgot to use and a doll's house which is actually a tea and coffee coffee making station. After my food coma had slightly subsided, I remembered they gave us some salted caramel canales to go. Just in case I hadn't had enough sugar for the day, I had to try one. I love how canales are crisp on the outside and then so soft and squishy on the inside. I finally worked up the motivation to leave my hotel room and did some more exploring of bath. Next activity on the agenda was a glass blowing workshop. I have never seen glass being blown before and you know what? It's actually pretty incredible. We then headed over to the Abbey Hotel and we had a little plan platter situation for dinner. I went for some prosciutto, some bread, some grilled veggies, and the ultimate combination, blue cheese and onion jam. We then did another very wholesome activity. The ladies from the Bath Flower School taught us how to make flower crowns. They were actually a lot more challenging to make than I thought. This was my final product. What do we think, guys? How did I do? We then headed over to the Roman Baths, and we got a sneak peek of them illuminated by torchlight. These torchlit evenings are going to be running from the 22nd of July, and I'd highly recommend visiting because this was so magical. There's even a station where you can try some of the mineral water from the bath. It's meant to be really good for you, but kind of tasted like drinking metal, so it was a no from me. I walked back to the hotel in the pouring rain. Somehow this just really suits the bath aesthetic. I was actually starving when I got back to the hotel, so thank goodness for the guest snack pantry. They had everything from fruit to ice cream to soft drinks, but I was craving something salty, so I got some popcorn. And it was exactly what I needed to fill my stomach and head off to sleep. Follow for day two as I got introduced to the biggest bun of my life.